down for a moment, and then back to light there again. There, go, there you go. There we are. So I'm gonna see if I can break some of this up and help dis uh, accelerate the dispersion of this stuff, give them some immediate relief, and maybe break away some of the red blood cells from their sticky protein aggregations um, and help help get them to um, filter out of the eye the way they normally would or should or could. <clears throat> this is not typical at all. I've tried it a couple times before. Here, with the right lighting, you can actually see just the I mean, there's millions, millions of red blood cells in there, where they're aggregated together. I was um, trying to describe to Paul, <laughs> I can't remember the word for it, but when you've, when you've ever seen uh, videos of starlings, you know, flying through the sky, that's what it kind of looked like with the lighting. It looked like there was like dense aggregations and then they kind of spin out, but it has this very sort of organic look to it. It's, it's actually kind of kind of cool in a way. You look down again, back to light here. There's a big one right there. I really like to break that up. Um, let's maybe look down and right a little bit. That'll bring that into better view. Good. Yeah, that's a big one. It's probably the most occlusive one here. So in spite of the general haziness of the vitreous, I am getting good delivery of energy because you're seeing these things like really move a lot you're probably seeing you know a lot of activity every time I fire the laser probably you see a lot of things moving around so as I discussed with Paul there is a little bit of a you know um, treatment recommendation dilemma here because it goes like this a brand new red blood cell um, will have you know be chock full of hemoglobin the red pigment in it and and that pigment will last about 120 days. So um, that's a brand new red blood cell. So imagine if you hemorrhage, you're gonna have red blood cells of, of various ages, some of them younger, some of them older, some of them in their waning days, some of them brand new, freshly minted. So uh, there would be an expectation that over the course of about four months or so, there would be a gradual decrease in the density of the pigment of these cells here. So one, not entirely unreasonable option is to just say, just give it time. See what happens in four months. It's not bad advice. Um, but even if the cells lose their pigment, uh, you still have the cell membranes trapped in this space. So you still have a lot of the haziness, a lot of the cloudiness. And maybe ultimately, uh, you know, one option is just leave it alone, give it six months maybe, see what you're left with, see what you've adapted to, and if you say, no, it's a lot better, this I can deal with, this is tolerable, I'm okay, then just leave it alone. Um, and, or you could do that and then make a decision to, um, oh, there's actually a little tiny little rice ringy thing. There's actually a real floater in there. <laughs> um, and then maybe pursue a vitrectomy. <clears throat> um, and that is not entirely bad advice. Or at least it's an option, a reasonable option. The other option is what we're doing here. It's like, well, let's get in there and try to disperse this. Let's break it up. Uh, look down and then back to light here. Uh, and maybe break up some of these heavier, denser masses like that thing right there. And uh, to give him some immediate relief, but also break up the sticky part of it, the vitreous sticky part that's kind of aggregating everything together and maybe encourage the red cells to become you know, free agents again and get filtered out the way they can through the anterior chamber. Um, so this is uh, what we're trying here. And Paul will come back tomorrow and he'll give me a report and he'll either say, I don't know what you're doing, I don't see any difference, this is a waste, then I'll say, well, then don't pay me and at least we tried and I don't know, it's, you know at least we tried. You just have to give it time then. All right, so this is Paul, day number two, um, who had had the vitreous hemorrhage. And we're no 
just starting to take a look here again. And um, Paul has said it's significantly better. I took a quick look a moment ago, and I had to agree. I was actually really pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, <clears throat> treating these ag aggregated um, groupings and clusterings of, of red blood cells after vitreous hemorrhage with a laser is not standard of care at all. So actually, when I had my conversation with, with Paul yesterday, I'm like, well, we could try. Um, just kind of not knowing. Lesson learned. It's worth trying. Well, I gotta say, I'm really pleased with this. I think it's going to not just give you, you know, immediate improvement, but I think uh, probably it's going to accelerate the general, you know, clearing of, of the vitreous. Um, it's not very orthodox treatment, but I think we can both agree that it was worth doing.